For someone who has been wrong more times about silver than he's been right, I'm making a pretty bold prediction here in this video about when silver will get to $50 an ounce. The rest is just merely speculation. But we're going to find out what's going to happen to silver after it reaches that number as we explore. <laughs> The magic number is $50 an ounce. We've seen that happen essentially twice in recent history. In the last uh, 20th century here and then in the 21st century, in 2011, we also saw silver climb up to $50 an ounce. But both of those times were anomalies. Now I'm gonna be referencing a piece here on investing.com that talks a little bit about this with a little bit of speculation about what would happen to silver when it reaches there. Now, there's some caveats here. Well, number one, I'm not a financial advisor. Neither is this author here, Jordan Roy Byron. But nonetheless, I think it's an interesting thought exercise. And uh, that thought exercise is based in part on technical analysis, which I'm really not that big a fan of, of really not seeing because it doesn't take into account the psychology of the markets, which I think is the major driver of the movement of the price of silver. Uh, which we know is also tied to the dollar index, which we know the dollar is driven by sentiment and, of course, oil and other commodities as well. But history shows that silver reliably follows the strength in gold. Now, it also tends to follow and, and react higher or lower or more wildly than gold in both directions. It leverages moves in gold. Therefore, silver is poised to benefit after gold breaks out from its multi-decade base and cup and handle pattern, which is technical mumbo jumbo here. Even that relationship notwithstanding, silver boasts its multi-decade base that offers even more explosive upside potential than gold. Silver is trading within a huge historic base unparalleled in market history. However, I gotta stop there because we've already seen record high gold prices and silver's gotten nowhere near that. Uh, so far. Uh, so that is something that the author should take into consideration here. Silver must double, though, to test its all-time high of $50 an ounce, in fact, more than double as of the recording of this video. Breaking above $50 an ounce would lead to a hugely explosive move. Uh, well, that goes without saying, but breaking above that indeed would, although gold could break its resistance within the next 12 to 18 months. Silver breaking $50 an ounce will require more time. That is the understatement of this whole article, I believe. Um, although silver took a gigantic cup and handle pattern, it's not because the handle consolidation, which is essentially from 2011 until now, it retraced roughly 75% of the advance from $4 an ounce to $50 an ounce. Uh, leading up to 2011. Uh, the handle consolidation typically retraces only 38 or 50% at the absolute most. But the huge base in silver has extremely bullish implications once silver is ready to break $50 an ounce. Now, what does that mean? I believe that means it's got to hold on to it for a while. In other words, it's got to stay within that range of $50 an ounce, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more for enough time to really strengthen that position. Because so far, the last two times it's happened, it nowhere near did that. It was an anomaly. It was something out of left field, and it didn't last very long at all. It's mainly just a massive spike to the upside and then a drop right back down, a plunge. Unlike gold, it is far from within striking distance, as we know. The coming breakout in gold and the beginning of a new secular bull market that should last into the 2030s has tremendously bullish implications for silver, not the least of which is breaking above $50 an ounce. Now that I agree with because, um, you know, as gold goes up and the sentiment moves, we've already seen silver kind of uh, go past some of the markers that you would think would be bearish for the metal. So it's poised, it's positioning itself, I think, for that move to the upside. 
And uh, what that will mean, I think it's gonna be a steady climb, but we'll see spikes here and there uh, from time to time when we see silver begin to kind of take, uh, take a hold of $30. And then we're talking the mid $30 range for a while. And then I think as it still, as it tends to build support during those critical points, I believe that's going to essentially catapult it up higher and maybe even at a faster pace if we see gold hold on to that level because it's not just a matter of it following gold. It's a matter of silver reacting like a commodity based off of recent reports from the Silver Institute and Metals Focus that says that silver is going to be in a deficit uh, this year um, and into next year. And that's going to should prove to be invaluable and it should prove to be good and positive no matter what the dollar index does, no matter what oil does, or even other commodities. Silver's demand should move the markets. Now I say that should is, you know, uh, because we have seen times where it has not moved the markets like it should. In fact, we had a deficit last year and we really didn't see silver do a whole lot. Um, upon breaking above $50 an ounce, silver will trigger a measured upside target of roughly $95, the author believes here. Now that is a staggering uh, prediction here and a bold one. I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. That's almost a doubling of $50 an ounce. Considering the history of breakouts from multi-decade basis in this lesson, specifically on copper, it would not be surprising to see silver trading in the triple digits within 18 months after breaking above $50 an ounce. However, we must also take into account and into consideration the fact that even though silver at times, and I've talked about it on this channel, silver at times does follow copper, but that's only on a percentage move upwards or downwards um, at any given point in time. But it should not be compared uh, like apples and oranges or apples and apples or what have you, because it's a very different metal. It is a much more rare metal. Um, and it's also uh, very, very... Um, Strategic. It's a strategic metal and how it's being used in industry. And that's something we must consider as well, too. There's a lot of different factors that are coming into play to keep that price down, None, not the least of which is a derivatives market. And that should always be considered here. Uh, but fascinating indeed. So the author here believes that silver trading in triple digits within 18 months after breaking above $50 an ounce. Folks, that's a pipe dream. Um, I don't know what the, uh, what the uh, precipice for this is or the reasoning behind it. It really doesn't go into it in this piece. But I do believe, though, uh, in, in disagreeing with this author here, if we see a sustained $50 silver uh, market here that stays above $50 for a considerable amount of time, what is a considerable amount of time? That's the other factor we have to take into account here. Uh, but before we get to that, before we talk about that amount of time that it must sustain to provide that support, when will silver reach $50 an ounce? Because that's the bold prediction that I made. And the answer to that is, is I don't know. But I do think it's quite possible within the next 10 years. And of course, anytime you lengthen the amount of time, it makes your prediction sound believable, right? You can add as many zeros to the months or years or days uh, yeah, I could see that happening, and I'm covering myself in that regard. But the thing is, is due to inflation, due to what's happening to this, the dollar, with inflation, um, it's very believable to see that as inflation and the value of this goes down, the value of this will be maintained. It won't increase. It will be maintained, which means that $50 would not be out of the question or out of the ordinary. Uh, so, in a sense, that number completely is arbitrary. And so, therefore, providing a, a sort of a floor or a support for silver at that price means that it's likely not going to go very far in the other direction. In other words, down. It's going to stay there or go up because silver is going to essentially, well, preserve your wealth. It's going to protect you against inflation. That's really what it's there for. That's the best thing that silver does as it sells itself. History is our guide. If you look at a 115-year chart of silver and you draw a straight line through it, adjusted for inflation, you will see that it is about even. And when you average in the massive spikes and the massive dips in the silver price over that time period. 
So that is the, the promise that we can have. Now, what will it do after that, if it reaches that? Well, it'll do just like it's doing right now, where I think $20 or $22, as at least at the recording of this video, it's kind of the new support for silver. Um, you know, and I think it's gonna be highly unusual to see it dip below that support level. And I think that uh, that is something that could be borne out by what we've seen in the past. There's only, it's, silver can only go so low. Um, and just like we saw during the height of the pandemic in March of 2020, it did below $12 an ounce, which is a radical move to the downside. But you know what? It didn't go below 10. Whereas, you know, 10 years before that, um, it was, uh, it was, you know, or, or what have you, 10 years before that, I was actually much higher. But you go back in 2006, 2005, 2004, it was much below that. So there is support for silver in that regard, and you have to think about it in, 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 that, in that way. I think if you were to take a look at other commodities, you would see somewhat of the same type of scenario. But I think silver is special because it is a relatively rare metal. Now, it's not a extremely rare, like gold, platinum, palladium, iridium, osmium, and other extremely rare, rare metals. But you know, it's just rare enough that, it, that there's that uh, value proposition that you really don't see with the, some of the other base metals out there. So what happens when silver reaches $50 again? Well, it depends on how long it stays there. I think it provides support for a continued higher climb. Will it be $98 within the next um, eight or $95 within the next uh, 12 months or somewhere after that? I doubt it. Will it go into triple digits after breaking above $50 an ounce? to $95 an ounce, I doubt it. In fact, I highly doubt it. I'd almost be willing to bet money on it. In the end, it's always good to be realistic about silver, to expect that the price could fall and it could rise. That's just a natural sway of things. Do not be deterred by that as you accumulate silver. And even if you don't feel like buying anymore because you're frustrated with the markets, hold on to it. Sooner or later, it's gonna have its day. And what does its day look like for you, the buyer? It means that you break even on it, adjusted for inflation. That's your day with silver. Hope you found this video informational, educational, and inspirational. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.